So we're gonna go ahead and mount up the CKS, the mud skipper kit. Uh, just a real quick, this is just what I use on the back just so it doesn't mar it up too bad. And then I use a piece of plywood to fill the gap. It's gonna be closed, guys. Oh, suck. Fun. It is what it is. The only thing that I can do is flip it around like I did the Beaver Dam Mud Runner kit. Now it's just not the correct way to run this. For this, you see how it's bottoming out already? The tail is still going to be in the water. Right there, it's still at five or six degrees. It is just level when I'm right here, but I can't move it anywhere else. I gotta switch it around or else it won't run right. Once the motor sits on and the tail is out, the tail will not be out of the water because it's bottoming out too early. Like this it would be in the water and then you go to lift it up out of the water by pushing it down and the prop will not come out of the water because it's, it's not going down enough. It's bottoming out too quick. So the way that I'm gonna have to fix it that I do not want to do but I have to do just like I did with the Beaver Dam Mud Rudder Kit is put this pencil on the inside of the boat and run it that way. The good thing with this kit is that they sent a 100 inch shaft and that's why I'm testing it second is to see if that 100 inch shaft will help get that prop running where it needs to. Alright just so you know how I'm changing this. Just the Phillips head, just a screw there. That is one nice thing that I do like about this and then there's like a small little washer so don't lose that. Same with the other side. Let me go to this side. You let me know if you think that is straight. How you change change them onto the other side. So as you see, this is a severe angle on the transom. It is flush up against the back of the transom here, as you see. There does there is a gap there. But if you look right there, you see how severe of an angle that is? Because those bolts aren't in straight and they're angled even further down, where they're pushing further down that way, because they're not in straight, those cups have so much pressure on them at an angle, it doesn't look safe. So we'll, I mean, see how it goes, but. So far, I'm not liking the looks of this. All right, so now I gotta figure out how to get this engine onto this engine mount. Whichever way you can get the motor up easily and mount this, do it. Once I get it on this mount, I'll go ahead and put on this transfer bracket, and then from there we can start doing regular, regular assembly of the long tail kit on the back side of the motor. I'm trying to get this engine onto the mount. I have it about where I want it. I opened up the the bag of bolts and kits and stuff and emptied it into this bag because it was all busted up in the box. I looked through the box and I couldn't find the extra parts and pieces. There are four bolts and four nuts. There is two washers and then three lock washers. With that, I don't think I have all the parts that are needed for this, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the same bolts and nuts that came with the B 
beave your damn mud runners kit. Shouldn't make a difference on the kit itself, but I just wanted to let you guys know that I won't be using the bolts and nuts with this kit that came with this kit. Gonna be using the other bolts because it's a complete set. That was a pain in the butt. All four bolts in. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put Loctite on them. I don't believe in the instructions that they said to put Loctite on, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that, just as a safety precaution. So what I'm gonna just end up doing is just loosening one bolt at a time, put some Loctite on it, put the bolt back down, and then move on to the next one. see we have the mud skipper kit on its mount and on the transom now we need to get this tail off this is the beaver dam mud runner kit that's the tail that belongs to that so I need to go ahead and take this off and then we can get into the regular assembly of the mud skipper kit this the uh, CKS kit what I'm gonna do is I put a, a sawhorse under the motor because when I go to take this tail off that motor is gonna want to drop so just to stop that from happening, I went ahead and put a saw horse under there. So now I'm going to take off this tail and then we can get back to the regular assembly. So with this kit, they give you some better pictures. They're more detailed, but they are also old pictures. Um, the kit in this picture is the turquoise color and it is um, the different bracket. They haven't updated their pictures. So the first thing that they want you to do is to put the transom mount on and the way that they want you to do that is put this on the outside like it should be but I can't write it like that so that's why I'm not doing it that way um, and then there's a hole on the center of this uh, transom mount bracket that they want you to put a lag bolt through um, or a lag screw whatever you want to call it um, I didn't want to put a hole in my boat because I'm going to be changing out these brackets all the time. So I'm not going to be doing that. If you're going to be using this bracket and you plan on keeping it on your boat, then it'd probably be a good idea to use it. And then I'm going to go to step four. Step one was mounting this to your boat. Step two is putting the lag bolt through. Step three is mounting the engine to the engine mount, just doing the four bolts and then putting it through here and now we're going to be on number four. Number four is telling us to remove the key from the keyway, undo small screws in the long tail PTO drive shaft, and slide the PTO shaft onto the engine crank, making sure the screw holes in the PTO shaft line up with the keyway underneath. Place screws back into PTO drive shaft and hand tighten, making sure all of the screws are tightened into the keyway. Just so you guys see, this is different than their instructions, so I'm guessing this goes on to there like that. Looks like they still use, like they want you to use this small keyway here. So we'll go ahead and use that small keyway. This is what came in the kit. See on this end it looks like it's angled a little bit, more compared to that straight in there. So I'm gonna put this angled piece at the rear because that's how it is on the engine. It flares up a little bit. So I'm guessing we have to use it even though the instructions say to take the keyway out. So looking at it, it looks like those bolts go right into that keyway and tighten down. So that's how it's going to be. So that's actually going in the channel of the keyway there. The key that they gave you is short and doesn't go in there all the way. It goes right up to that first hole. So now we're on step five. 
and now we're going to put the chrome PTO housing onto that and then use those screws that I already threaded in there. We gotta fill that housing up with grease and then bolt it on there. Corn head grease. So I'm just gonna use my fingers to have gloves on and then I'll just replace the gloves afterwards. All right, so there's four of these lock washers in the bag. Didn't say what they go to, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put them on this, and I'm also gonna use some Loctite, which they didn't specify to use Loctite or anything like that, but all the other kids do. Steps one through five are now done. <coughs> uh, now we need to screw in grease inspection cup and fill with marine grease. So now we're just going to push the long tail shaft into the PTO housing until the 10 point connector attaches to the female end of the PTO drive shaft inside the housing. So now just make sure your fuel is off, make sure your engine start is off. Mm. Once the shaft is connected then the skeg fin below the prop is pointed down, hand tighten the two wing bolts into the PTO housing assembly wing bolts will be tightened down on the PTO housing sufficiently to keep it in place and stop the outer housing from rotating. We got a seven and a half inch regular prop, we got an eight inch weedless prop, and then we got an eight and a half inch regular prop. I'm going to go ahead and put the eight and a half regular inch prop on because that my motor seems to be running at that uh, RPM range to where the eight and a half is good. Again, all of these are tapered. That's the big end, that's the small end. So of course the big end goes on first. With this shaft, there is no keyway. All right, so that's a little different. I just see this eight and a half. It looks like it is meant to have a keyway. These other two do not have any keyways in them. We are on to the handle. This handle, you should have seen it in the unboxing video. It is the shortest handle. So with this handle, I probably want it as long as I can get it. Make sure that to orientate, blah, blah. make sure to orientate your holes up for your throttle lever and all that. And I wanna make sure that I leave just a little bit sticking out so I know that it has enough meat to grab. All right, got some half inch wrenches. All right, so that's your handle. So right there, you got your handle. And the way that I oriented it was so, as you can see right there, that very top hole, that should be your throttle hole, and that should be what we are gonna be using next. We've gone through almost all the steps. The only other steps that I've listed here is hooking up your throttle linkage and cable and your throttle lever on your handle. This is the throttle lever that came in your kit. Just in case you wanna see how this assembly is put together, just in case yours fell apart just like mine did. On the top side, where your nut is, you have that washer. On this side, on the bottom side, you have this single silver washer. All right, so just so you guys know, this washer I was talking about that was on the upper side of this went ahead and removed it so that way it returns to idle speed if you kept it in there it would just stay right there if you want to stay there if you're doing a long trip then maybe you want to keep it in there 
but if you're just running normal, take it out of there so it always returns to idle speed. Alright, so what I recommend doing is go ahead and mounting it. Right there's the tip of your handle, over there's your engine. So now, this is the way that you want it pointing because your hand's going to be here and you're going to be pushing it like that. You have your cable, you have two ends on it. So we're going to feed it through the hole, make sure this screw is loosened so you can feed the cable through there. And go ahead, feed it back into our tube, tighten down this flathead screw. And we will go ahead and feed in this back one through the handle. So right there at our throttle, we're good. I may put a zip tie right here just to hold this from doing this number. All right, so we have this set up the way we need to. Goes through, comes out here. On my engine, there's two places to put the throttle. One is right there, and the other is right there. I'm going to be feeding it through here. i got to take this box off. This is the old throttle cable. And just to be authentic, I'm going to go ahead and use the CKS one and not the one that was on the Beaver Dam Mud Runner kit. So now we'll tighten this down. Let's see if we got full throttle. So we'll go ahead, tighten this down good. So now we gotta put the air filter back on. One thing I do not want to do. back on. Alright, so the last thing is the kill switch. On their instructions, they do not have anything about their kill switch. They say to go online and to get the instructions. There's a button inside, I guess. And I guess that may keep it depressed, and then when you pull. There's does come with wire. So it will most likely fit here. It will not, most likely will not fit on that handle. Um, you can't put it in front of the throttle lever because there's no room for it there. So, yeah, four screws on the back. This kill switch will not last in a harsh environment. Go ahead and put the end on it just to hold it together real quick. So it does reach all the way around, but I don't have a wiring diagram. 